Good evening, Dr. Phil here. Today we'll be discussing on conduct of anesthesia for patients with bronchial asthma. General considerations of bronchial asthma. Asthma is a chronic inflammatory disorder of the airways that causes recurrent episodes of wheezing, breathlessness, chest tightness, and cough, particularly at night and or early in the morning. The hallmarks of the disease are intermittent and reversible airway obstruction, chronic bronchial inflammation with eosinophils, bronchial smooth muscle cell hypertrophy and hyperreactivity, and increased mucus secretion. Symptoms are the result of airway obstruction, inflammation, and hyperresponsiveness. Bronchial wall inflammation causes mucus hypersecretion, epithelial damage, and increased tendency for bronchoconstriction. The incidence of perioperative bronchospasm and laryngospasm in asthmatic patients undergoing routine surgery is less than 2%, especially if routine medications is used and the asthma is well controlled. Complications are increased in asthmatic patients who are more than 50 years old, have active respiratory tract infection, active bronchospasm, and poorly controlled asthma. Do not anesthetize a patient for elective cases if asthma control is not optimal. Poorly controlled asthmatics have increased risk of bronchospasm, sputum retention, atelectasis, infection, respiratory failure, air trapping, hyperinflation of the lungs, increased work of breathing, and VQ mismatch. Preoperative assessment of the patient with bronchial asthma. Typical symptoms are shortness of breath, wheezing, cough, and sputum production. Unlike COPD, bronchial asthma has childhood symptoms, duronal variation, specific trigger factors especially allergic in nature, absence of smoking history is typical, and response to previous treatment, i.e. reversibility of airway obstruction. Features of increased probability of asthma includes wheezing, dyspnea, chest tightness, duronal variation, symptoms triggered by exercise, allergens, or cold air, Symptoms triggered by aspirin or beta blockers, history of atopy or family history of atopy and asthma, widespread wheeze heard on auscultation, unexplained low FEV1 or PEFR, and unexplained peripheral blood eosinophilia. Lower probability of bronchial asthma occurs if there is prominent dizziness, lightheadedness, or tingling, chronic productive cough with no wheeze, normal examination when symptomatic, Change in voice, symptoms with URTI only, significant smoking history, cardiac disease, and normal PEFR when symptomatic. Differential diagnosis for bronchial asthma includes pulmonary edema, COPD, large airway obstruction, SVC obstruction, pneumothorax pulmonary embolism, bronchiectasis, and obliterative bronchiolitis. Identify indicators of severe bronchial asthma such as frequent exacerbation, frequent hospital visits, and prior tracheal intubation and mechanical ventilation to manage a severe asthmatic attack. Identify trigger factors and allergies, such as cold air, exercise, emotions, allergens, infection, smoking and passive smoking, air pollution, NSAIDs, and beta blockers. Quantify exercise tolerance, postpone surgery if there is URTI, and aspirin-induced asthma can occur in up to 21% of adult asthmatics and 5% in pediatric asthmatics. If the patient is smoking, advise to stop smoking 2 months prior to elective surgery. Current therapy Ask about the type, dose, frequency, degree of benefit, control of disease, and ensure good compliance to therapy. Perioperative recommendations for asthma medications include for beta agonists such as salbutamol, terbutaline, and salmeterol, convert to nebulized preparation, identify and treat side effects. For ipratropium bromide, convert to nebulized preparation. Inhaled steroids such as baclometasone, budesonide, and fluticasone, continue inhaled formulation. If more than 1,500 micrograms per day of baclometasone is administered, identify and treat adrenal suppression. Oral steroids such as prednisolone continue as IV hydrocortisone until taking orally. If more than 10 mg per day, 
adrenal suppression is likely. Leukotriene receptor antagonists such as Montelukast and Zephyrolukast restart when taking oral medications. Mast cell stabilizers such as disodium chromoglycate continue by inhaler and for aminophylline, continue where possible. Consider converting to IV infusion perioperatively for severe asthma. Side effects of patients on steroids include gastrointestinal side effects such as hyperglycemia, pancreatitis, candidiasis, esophageal, and peptic ulceration. Musculoskeletal side effects are osteoporosis, myopathy, fractures, and growth suppression. Endocrine side effects are weight gain, adrenal suppression, and Cushing syndrome. The patient may have aggravated epilepsy, depression, and psychosis, cataract, glaucoma, and papilloedema. For immune system, the patient might have infections, fever, raised white cell count, leukopenia, and for cardiovascular system, the patient might have hypertension. Physical examination. Identify signs of acute bronchospasm, such as tachypnea, audible wheeze, hyperinflated chest, hyperresonant percussion note, reduced air entry, prolonged expiratory phase, and widespread polyphonic wheeze. Identify signs of active respiratory tract infection and chronic lung disease as well. Right heart failure can present as cyanosis, dyspnea, clubbing, elevated JVP, loud P2, and S3-S4 are heard. Nasal polyps may exist in atopic patients, and this may preclude nasal intubation. Decide on treatment options prior to surgery based on the severity of disease. For well-controlled asthma, i.e. PEFR more than 80% of predicted and minimal symptoms, consider adding short-acting beta-2 agonists just prior to surgery. For partially controlled asthma, add inhaled corticosteroids plus short-acting beta agonists one week before surgery. For uncontrolled asthma, add oral corticosteroids such as prednisolone 20 to 40 mg daily for one week, referred for preoperative review by a chest physician. GINA assessment of asthma control in adults, adolescents, and children aged 6 to 11 years old, 2016. The level of asthma symptom control for well control, none of the above. For partially controlled, one or two of the above, and uncontrolled, three to four of the above. In the past four weeks, has the patient had daytime asthma symptoms more than twice a week? Any night waking due to asthma? Reliever needed for symptoms more than twice a week? And any activity limitations due to asthma? Investigations Serial home measurements of peak expiratory flow rates assess response to bronchodilators. Early morning dip in peak flow suggests control is not optimal. The urinal variation of more than 20% on more than 3 days a week for 2 weeks is typical in bronchial asthma. Spirometry detects chronic residual effects of acute asthma and stratifies the severity of the disease. Obstructive defect occurs as reduced FEV1, reduced FEV1 to FVC ratio, increased residual volume, and usually more than 15% improvement in FEV1 following beta-2 agonist or steroid trial. Blood gas analysis is only required in assessing patients with severe asthma, poorly controlled frequent hospital admissions, previous ICU admission, especially prior to major surgery. ECG may show right atrial or ventricular hypertrophy, right ventricular acute strain, right axis deviation, and right bundle branch block. Chest X-ray may show flattened diaphragms, pulmonary congestion, pulmonary edema, and pulmonary infiltrates. Echocardiogram is indicated to assess right-sided heart failure, electrolytes, and glucose. Patients on high-dose beta-2 agonists may have hypokalemia, hyperglycemia, hypomagnesemia, and hyperlactemia. Conflicts during conduct of anesthesia. Risk of bronchospasm in patients requiring general anesthesia with endotracheal intubation. Airway instrumentation may trigger bronchoconstriction via parasympathetic reflex. Conduct of anesthesia. The main goal is to avoid bronchospasm, chest physiotherapy preoperatively to improve sputum clearance. Pre-medication, consider anticholinergic such as glycopyrrolate to reduce airway secretion and suppress upper airway vagal responses. Nebulize salbutamol 2.5 mg 
and aspiration prophylaxis as aspiration can trigger severe bronchospasm, use metoclopramide, sodium citrate and ranitidine. Treat any concurrent respiratory tract infections and correct fluid and electrolyte imbalances such as hypokalemia, hyperglycemia and hypomagnesemia. Arterial line is indicated for high-risk cases for frequent ABG assessments. For cases of poorly controlled asthma, regional techniques are favoured the patient should be able to lie flat comfortably. Room setup, standard monitors with or without folic catheter, medications as discussed below. Avoiding bronchospasm during intubation. Induction drugs. Ensure potent opioid cover such as the use of fentanyl, alfentanyl or remifentanyl. Local anesthetic spray to the vocal cords is an option. Use propofol or ketamine. Insert instruments into the airway only when the patient is at a deep plane of anesthesia. Laryngeal mask airway has lower risk of triggering bronchospasm or laryngospasm compared with endotracheal intubation. Avoiding bronchospasm after intubation. Choice of drug in general anesthesia. Avoid histamine releasing drugs such as morphine, atracurium, mevacurium and patidine. Short-acting analgesics if minimal operative pain is expected, such as the use of alfentanil and remifentanil. Volatile anesthetics, propofol, opioids, ketamine as appropriate. Drugs considered safe for asthmatics includes For induction, propofol, etomidate, ketamine and midazolam are safe. For opioids, petidine, fentanyl, alfentanil and remifentanil. For muscle relaxants, saxamethonium, Vacuronium, rocuronium, pancuronium, cis atracurium are safe. Volatile agents such as halotane, isoflurane, and fluorine, and sevoflurane are advisable. Use of humidified and warm gases to reduce airway irritation. Stimulating maneuvers should be avoided or only performed when the patient is in a deep plane of anesthesia and adequate analgesia is a must. Usage of acetylcholine esterase inhibitors such as neostigmine for reversal of neuromuscular blockage should be used with caution due to their mascaranic side effects, i.e. bronchospasm. Ventilatory strategy to avoid air trapping, autopeak, barotrauma and volutrauma. Limit peak inspiratory pressures to less than 30 cmH2O. Limit tidal volumes to 6 mL per kg and lengthen IE ratio such as 1 to 3. Treatment of bronchospasm will be discussed in the next video. Emergence. Controlled emergence is a must. Use IV lidocaine 1.5 mg per kg prior to extubation if no contraindication or LA spray to the vocal cords. Deep extubation is an option if no contraindication. Postoperative care. Admission of an asthmatic patient to HDU or ICU for postoperative observation or mechanical ventilation is indicated in patients with severe asthma, acute bronchospasm intraoperatively, difficult airway, airway trauma or airway edema and full stomach. Good pain control such as the use of regional, parenteral, oral methods are advisable. Regional techniques include epidural and nerve blocks, etc. Parenteral techniques such as PCA fentanyl. Avoid morphine which can provoke bronchospasm via histamine release. Oral analgesia are used such as paracetamol and opioids. Avoid histamine releasing drugs as mentioned or NSAIDs, especially if they have triggered an asthmatic attack in the past. NSAIDs can be used if tolerated in the past, but avoid NSAIDs in brittle and poorly controlled asthmatics. Oxygen supplementation should be provided after general anesthesia and for the duration of epidural or PCA. Regular nebulizer therapy, additional nebulized bronchodilators may be needed. Steroids, review dose and route of administration daily. Treat contributing factors of bronchospasm aggressively such as infection, left ventricular failure, pulmonary embolism, fluid overload, and pneumothorax. These are my references. Thank you.